Hi everyone, I'm KM, an associate professor in the School of Life Sciences. My research involves doing a lot of gene expression studies using a technique called real-time PCR. I believe this technique can help you perform gene expression studies. My students can do it and you can do it too. We will cover this subject in four sections. The first one explains why real-time PCR is used and the following videos cover quantitative real-time PCR, real-time PCR quantification methods, and how to choose the housekeeping genes for normalization in your real-time PCR. So first, you have to understand that there are different methods of studying gene expression at five different levels. We all know that DNA makes RNA makes protein expressed will carry out their functions as mature proteins. Level 1 is gene transcription, which can be studied by nuclear one-on assays, and level 2 is after transcription and is studied with the S1 nuclease assay. Now, these assays require more advanced and complicated methods to purify cell nuclei using S1 nuclease to digest unprotected RNA with specific probes and P32 labeling of the newly synthesized RNAs. Level 3 is mRNA accumulation. At this level, we need to purify total RNA for the analysis. For in situ hybridization, you do not need to purify the RNA, but you do need to put, detect the mRNA with specific probes in situ. Other methods to detect mRNAs involve northern blot analysis in which RNA is first separated on a gel and then transferred to a membrane blot to be detected. Ribonuclease A protection uses ribonuclease A to digest unprotected RNA so that your target RNA is protected and can be quantified. The two methods, the other two methods are P-cell-based, either comparing with a control gene and analyzing the gel or detecting the P-cell product in real time on the machine, which is real-time PCR. Finally, Western blot analysis is used to study proteins expressed in a protein gel then are transferred to blots for immune detection or detection with specific antibodies. Level 5 is for protein functions mainly and is more easily done with enzyme activities if the expressed protein is an enzyme. Here is an example of in situ hybridization where you can see the expression site of the target genes. In this case, we detected the expression of a gene called CYP1A, mainly in the liver and intestine of zebrafish embryos that had been exposed to a chemical called BDE99, but no, no such expression was found in the embryos exposed to BDE47. However, as you can see with this method, Hardly any quantitative analysis is done, and sometimes the background can be high. Since real-time PCR is used to analyze mRNA, we must first start with RNA extraction. You can watch this video online to learn how to purify RNA. Good quality RNA is important to the success of real-time PCR. The next step is the synthesis of first-strand cDNA or complementary DNA from the purified mRNA using an oligo-DT primer to prime the synthesis of the first strand with the NTPs and reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is an RNA-directed DNA polymerase. For example, an RNA virus called Melonium marine leukemia virus or MMLV has a reverse transcript state cloned for such purpose. It works well at 42 degrees Celsius, so at the last step, step 3 after DNA synthesis, we have the first strand cDNA products ready for quantitative PCR. Let's review what PCR is. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. In normal PCR, the two strands of DNA are denatured first so that primers from the forward and reverse side can annul to a, at a desired annealing temperature. 
The last step of P-cell is called primer extension, which uses a histable DNA polymerase to duplicate one copy of the RNA. The same occurs here in reverse transcription PCR or RT-PCR with the first strand cDNA product in which tag polymerase with a pair of gene-specific primers can amplify the PCR products for the detection of your target gene. Cycle after cycle, we get PCR products that can be detected in real time, which is why this technique is called real-time PCR. Here is a diagram of the whole procedure of real-time PCR or qPCR, quantitative real-time PCR. We usually use TRISO to purify our RNA samples, and we may use DNAs to remove DNA contamination. In step 3 here, you check the purity and integrity of RNA purified on agro gel, and use nano drop to, to, to quantify the RNA you have. You check for DNA contamination or the quality of the RNA by reading the 260 to 280 nanometer ratio. In step 4, we produce the first strand DNA, which involves reverse transcription. And we usually also check the first strand DNA mate and see if we can make any conventional piece of products inspect in the agro strand. Finally, quantitative real-time PCL can be carried out in a machine to quantify the PCL products generated with specific detection chemistry. So, why use real-time PCL? It allows the measurement of mRNA levels of gene expression and provides quantitative analysis of the PCL product to be detected by a machine. The specific primers used for your target gene, make this technique highly specific to your gene of interest. This method is sensitive and can be used for other purposes, for example, to detect pathogens or even genetically modified foods. The advantages of real-time PCR include its quantitative power, so we usually call this qPCR. All amplifications are done and monitored in real time with a highly dynamic range of 10 to 10 power. It is 10 to 100,000 volt more sensitive than other assays such as the ribonuclease protection assay. Because it is so sensitive, we need only a very small sample or a minimal amount of RNA. Real-time detection requires no post-RNA analysis like that required with gel running. Results can be obtained rapidly and with ultra-rapid cycling within two hours. So when gene-specific primers are used, we can simultaneously detect many genes at the same time. Please watch the next video to find out how we quantify the PCR products.